Activision has removed another streamer's skin from Call of Duty. Activision has complied with Tim the Tatman's request to have his skin removed from the game in solidarity with streamer Nick Merckx. I have to imagine people who don't play games are a bit confused. What do you mean? They removed his skin? Ah! Okay, this is a, a, a skin that goes over your character in Call of Duty, which is basically like it makes the character look like the guy. I'm assuming most of you know that, but I just thought maybe I should clarify. Now, let's slow down there a minute, because I know for you young folks, you completely understand the significance of this and what it means. For those that may be a bit older and not in this culture, this is a tremendous culture war victory once again for the sane, the rational, the good people of this country. And it's not so much a right wing thing. As we've often said, left and right are rather meaningless in the culture war. In terms of a reference to the culture war left and right, it doesn't necessarily mean conservative or liberal. But what we're seeing now, a prominent streamer with millions of followers, I think like nearly 10 million followers, said, leave the little children alone. Something I'm, I'm paraphrasing, not an exact quote. It may be that. And they called this homophobic and anti LGBTQ. Why? What about leaving kids alone is inherently anti LGBTQ? Perhaps Activision and Call of Duty have other predilections, and they're well aware of what it means when they say LGBTQ. You see, this is the problem. I've pointed this out before that there are many individuals who have attraction to children who are exploiting the LGBTQ community in order to normalize their disgusting and illegal behaviors. But now, if you say that there are people targeting kids, they say you're homophobic, you're anti-LGBTQ. That's the shield they're using. You know, what's really funny is they've been trying to do this for some time. There was something online called LGBTP, where they tried putting pedo in the LGBT acronym. And a lot of people thought it was a joke. They thought it was a troll to, to, to insult people. No, they're actually doing it. So you get this video game streamer, very famous, as I mentioned, like 10 million followers. And he says, leave the kids alone. They, they remove his skin from the game. They say, no, we, we support pride. Wait, 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 wait. Is that what pride means? Because when someone says, leave kids alone, you say, no, because we celebrate pride. It's like, are you referring to your attraction to children? That's the only explanation. They're grooming kids. But here's the, here's the latest update. Tim the Tatman is another very prominent streamer. And he tweeted out, it doesn't feel right for him to have a skin in the game, like a character in the game, if his friend has been axed. And so he said, remove me as well. And they did. And now Activision on Twitter is getting absolutely roasted. I'll pull that up in a second. People are commenting on all of their pride posts saying like, nope, this ain't it. And the crazy thing is they keep doubling down. So I'll jump to the Activision posts and we'll get a beauty, strength, resilience. Activision celebrates pride. First, let's talk about where it all started very quickly for those that don't know the context. The Verge reports Call of Duty removes streamers skin after homophobic comments. We are focused on celebrating pride with our employees and our community, Activision tweeted. Now hold on there a minute. What did Nick Merckx actually say? Where the, he, okay, here you go. Someone tweeted, Americans are in a sad place right now. Let people love who they love and live your own life. Nick Merckx responded, saying, they should leave little children alone. That's the real issue. Though Nick Merckx's comments might seem innocuous, he is actually repeating a right-wing homophobic talking point that erroneously and dangerously equates any kind of LGBTQ plus acceptance or acknowledgement as an existential threat to children. Homophobes, as a part of a reactionary backlash to the greater visibility of queer and trans people, are returning to an age-old tactic by which they try to reframe any kind of queer expression as grooming children, making them vulnerable to conversion or sexual assault. Nice try, The Verge. Y'all are on the wrong side of history. You love to say it. You, the, the, the left loves to say they're on the right side of history. Dude, Nick Merckx is not a right winger. He's not a big conservative. He's a video game guy. He's an entertainer. He plays video games. He is a mainstream modern celebrity. Just saying, leave kids alone, man. 
you can't come out and try to tell all of these people who follow this guy, he's right wing. This is what they don't understand. These streamers have a general audience, people who often don't care about politics, aren't paying attention all that much. You are not going to convince them the guy they like is far right. The same thing went for PewDiePie. Dude, you take a swing at the king, you better not miss. What I, well, the point is, The Verge and these other corporate, uh, corporate outlets trying to tell a general population that this guy is bad when they know who he is. Like, you have a celebrity with more fans than The Verge has readers. So when they write this, the readers are like, dude, you're lying. I, I know this guy. He's a good dude. Now, here's the latest update. Activision removes another streamer's skin from Call of Duty. Activision has complied with Tim the Tatman's request to have his skin removed. I love that, to have his skin removed. <laughs> it does sound kind of funny, right? He like goes to the doctor and he's like, please remove my skin. He had a tattoo. <laughs> it's funny because he's Tim the Tatman. Does he have tattoos? Activision has removed another streamer's skin from a game, not their body. <laughs> All right. That was a good one, The Verge. Tim the Tatman, a prominent Call of Duty streamer, asked to have his operator bundle removed from Call of Duty in support of his friend Nick Merckx, whose skin was pulled last week after he made homophobic comments. It's just such a lie. At Tim's request, we have removed the Tim the Tatman operator bundle from the Modern Warfare 2 and the Warzone store, wrote Activision spokesperson Neil Wood in an email to The Verge. Of course, there's also another component of the story, and that is Dr. Disrespect, who was another prominent streamer deleting Call of Duty live to his audience, saying, boycott. Yo, the culture wars are fierce. Bud Light's tanking, Target's tanking. And now this, this is huge because it's younger people playing these video games. Not completely, but many. Tim the Tatman, who named Nick Merckx as a longtime friend, tweeted that it felt wrong for him to have a skin in the game when Nick Merckx didn't and requested that Activision remove his skin too. In support of my friend, please remove the Tim the Tatman bundle. He tweeted, another FPS streamer, Dr. Disrespect, also expressed his solidarity with Nick Merckx uninstalling Call of Duty during a recent stream. It is notable that Dr. Disrespect, who was once temporarily banned from Twitch for streaming from a public bathroom. okay, that's hilarious, though, before being permanently banned for mysterious reasons, is developing his own extraction shooter that would likely be in competition with Call of Duty Warzone. But come on. How many FPS shooter games are there? How many team up shooter uh, games are there? Just because one exists doesn't mean like they're trying to imply he's doing this for, for financial reasons. All of this has happened after Nick Merckx made a comment that invoked a homophobic dog whistle that bigoted people have repeated for a very long time that anything LGBTQ plus related is harmful to and should be kept from children. There's a video of two adult men at Pride performing a sex act on each other in front of children. There's a video from a couple years ago of a nude man jumping up and down in front of children. Come on. These are public events and people are saying, we don't care if you love who you love. We don't care if you if Lockheed Martin waves a, a, a rainbow flag. But why are there two adult men performing a sex act on each other in public in front of kids? And they're defending it. Another video is going viral photo showing a man. I would I would say exposing himself to a woman holding her child, laughing and smiling. It's like, yeah, that's bad for kids, dude. But what they try and do is they try and claim that if you go to a kid and you say, these two men love each other, they're like, you're, 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 uh, that's what you're saying. You're a homophobe. So I'll say it right now. The, the example I often give being Dave Rubin. Sorry, Dave, for being the the go-to talking point in this regard. But Dave is a gay married man who has kids. And I think he'll be one of the best dads and give those kids one of the best lives they could possibly have. I have literally no issue whatsoever. Conservatives, many of them do. Don't get me wrong. Conservatives oppose surrogacy in many, many circumstances, not all, but many. And many of them don't want children to go grow up having two dads. I am a traditional liberal, not a conservative. I, uh, I am not concerned about that. I am concerned about these people who clearly have an illegal, a, a desire for children that is illegal. I shouldn't say the desire, but like the action they would take is, is one of the most heinous crimes imaginable. These people coming into the LGBTQ community and then pushing these things. And if you point it out, they lie and claim you're a homophobe. 
No, I think uh, Dave Rubin's kids are going to grow up knowing exactly what it means to be LGBT or, or LGB, lesbian, gay or bi, and understand the, the ideas of uh, gay marriage and people loving each other and things like that. And I don't think that will have a negative impact on these kids. I think what has a negative impact on these kids is gender ideology, the manipulation of their perspectives as they're growing. So uh, rapid onset gender, uh, uh, gender dysphoria, is that what it's called, I think? Which I don't believe is all of, uh, of trans, uh, of gender dysphoric children, but is a component to it. I think going to kids and confusing them is, 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 is bad. I think showing them overt sex acts is extremely bad. I think explaining to kids as they grow up and they get to a certain age, like the birds and the bees and all that stuff, I think that's totally normal and it's up to the parents to decide. But you see how they're lying, cheating and stealing? This is what they do. Nick Merckx is like, dude, they're showing nasty stuff to kids in these schools. Nikki Freed, Democrat in Florida, referred to it as butt plug porn. OK, that's in schools. That should not be for children. Leave the children alone. But it makes you wonder, doesn't it? When they come out and they say, oh, you want to leave the children alone? That's anti LGBTQ. OK, well, it's the verge outright calling LGBTQ people pedophiles. And I'm not trying to be cute. If you say, hey, pedos, leave kids alone. And then they go, hey, why are you why are you telling the LGBTQ people they're bad? It's like, I wasn't. I'm talking about the pedophiles. Who are you talking about? The perception from companies like The Verge and major corporations is that the LGBTQ plus community is, is, at least to some degree, pedophiles. That's the message they push when we say when I say something like, I have no problem with gay marriage. I have no problem with a gay married couple having kids. I have no problem if children at the right age start learning about gay married couples. Me, that's me. You could disagree. Feel free to do so and comment below. But I say that and then I say, I just don't think you should be putting overly sexualized books and stuff in front of these kids. I don't think you should be showing kids what Nikki Freed would describe as butt plug porn. And then they say, you're a homophobe. And I'm like, uh, are you talking about pedophiles? Like, are you criticizing me because I'm like, pedophiles are bad? Yo, you're basically saying you are a pedophile when you do that. The Verge coming out, they're showing that they have those predilections. Again, not being cute. I'm saying, what other reason would they do that? So that makes you wonder, doesn't it? Well, to the dead man, he tweeted this. Nick Merckx has been my friend for years. We went in getting our COD operators together. It feels wrong for me to have mine and for him to no longer have his. In support of my friend, please remove the Tim the Tatman bundle. That's that's amazing. Uh, Nick Merckx and Tim the Tatman, Dr. Disrespect, believe it or not, these video game streamers, y'all are making the world a better place because you're just speaking up for yourselves. That's it. None of these guys said anything about the LGBT community. None of them said anything like they're bad or they're wrong. They just said, hey, man, keep kids out of it. And in fact, I was only just Nick, Nick Merckx and they came after him. Because it's culty and it's insane. Activision doubled down. So let me uh, let me make sure I have this all all, all correctly. I want to make sure I have the uh, Nick Merckx timeline correct. So here's uh, Nick Merckx. He said on June 9th, friends are created in good times, but families are built built through adversity. Appreciate all of you that have had my back. Understand my position as a new father and recognize the love I have for all. Ain't no hate in this heart. I want to pull up his replies. And I want to show you uh, the, the time stamps on this one. So uh, let's see. We'll, we'll go back to because uh, it was a while ago. It was a couple days ago when he said, leave the little children alone. And uh, we're at June 7th. Where are we at? Where are we at? Let me try and find it. Here we go. So he tweeted this June 7th, 1232 p.m. He said they should leave little children alone. That's the real issue. Activision on June 8th tweeted their support for Pride. And they have been ratioed into oblivion. Now, for those that aren't familiar with the ratioing, it means that people are responding to the tweet, but not sharing the tweet. Typically, it's a bad thing. It's not always a bad thing. If I tweet something like, what's your favorite pizza topping or something, then uh, I'll get a thousand replies and like 10 retweets. But usually a ratio is like, you'll say an opinion and most people will not share your opinion because they disagree. They will criticize you for having such opinion. Activision embraces the beauty and strength of diversity, equality, and unity. We aim to foster an inclusive, supportive, and judgment-free environment. Now, here's the thing. They get ratioed June 8th. 
390 retweets, 5,943 responses. They then double down a day later. Join us in celebrating the power of pride. Activision is excellent to be part of this of the Los Angeles Pride Parade on June 11th. If you see our float during the parade route, be sure to say hello and share your own stories of pride and acceptance. See you there. I have a question. I have friends who are who are at LA Pride posting photos and videos of their participation in it. And I have to wonder, why don't you speak out about in West Hollywood, the two men performing a sex act on each other? Why don't you speak out about the man exposing himself to the woman and her child? I just don't get it. Do they say stuff like, oh, that, that's not really happening. Look, there's photos of it. And I'm not saying it's everyone. You, 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 you watch a lot of these videos and it's like Lockheed Martin. They're just in a parade. So why allow it in any capacity and why criticize those who are upset about it unless you actively seek to protect pedophiles? I am not trying to be cute. I am not trying. I am saying this literally. It the only logical reason in the absence of evidence, the solution that makes the least amount of assumptions tends to be correct. The least, if someone comes out and speaks up in defense of a pedophile, I'm like, you must I, like you must have this same predilection. Like, I don't know what else to say. Now, of course, to be fair, there's a difference. The left will try and say, like, if you dis- defend the, the free speech of a fascist, you must be a fascist. We're not, we're not talking about the same thing. If I believe in free speech and someone you claim is a fascist believes in free speech, what that shows is I literally do defend free speech, even for people I disagree with. If there's one person who is outright talking about how, they, how, how they're targeting kids and then you speak up in defense of them, it seems like you are in favor of, of targeting kids. You see the point? Like, yes. I am in favor of free speech. So here's the thing. When Activision tweeted the next one, they disabled replies so that you couldn't comment. And here's what people had to say in response to Activision celebrating pride. More pride posts than good games in the last three years. I think we would all celebrate if you made the game better. Leave kids alone. Leave our kids alone. One person says, leave children alone. Happy pride to you guys. Hey, there's someone who's actually into it. Leave children alone. And this person actually has a pride flag in their in their bio. (laughs) Yeah, amazing. Fix your game. Ah, yes. The company that lets eight year olds scream racial and sexual slurs in its lobbies is now lecturing us on diversity and inclusion. Yeah. What do you got to say about that? Man, there's a lot going on. Target down 15 billion dollars. It's wild times, huh? Wild times indeed. These boycotts, they're effective. Forbes, I love this one. Nick Merckx, Tin the Tat Man. How about no more celebrity influencer operator bundles in Call of Duty from now on? You see what's happening? When they begin to lose and they lose control of the narrative, censorship is their only opportunity. Remove them. Take their influence away. Don't let them be involved anymore. Well, they're choosing to step back. I want to give a shout out to our good friend, Hassan Piker. I love this. Hassan criticizes Dr. Disrespect for uninstalling Call of Duty and supporting Nick Merckx. Hassan Abi criticizes Dr. Disrespect after he installs it, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I, I just look when it comes to Hassan, my assumption is he defends these things not because he himself is a pedophile, but because it's perceivably culturally popular among the cult. So if he sees someone say, leave kids alone, they pull his skin. It is Hassan who must be in defense of corporations, in defense of the establishment narrative, whatever that narrative may be. That's my perspective, perception, uh, perception of, uh, of Hassan. Because you got to wonder about like he criticized, uh, what did he, he criticized Nick Merckx over um, a, va- a no vaccine. What did they have? The, yeah. Okay. Hassan later points out some of Nick Merck's other controversial stances, such as no vaccine required meet and greet. I want to I ask a genuine question about Hassan. We, we've shared some opinions. We probably share many opinions on uh, uh, on the world, on imperialism, war, uh, racism, and all that stuff. My question is, though, you've got like me where I am anti-authoritarian and uh, fairly libertarian. But then you have Hassan, who is pro-corporate establishment, but makes anti-authoritarian arguments. That's my I, I don't understand how, the, how that makes sense. Right. Like when the government mandates a medical procedure for an individual that benefits a massive multinational corporation, several of them. How is it con- like how are you? Uh, 
the 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 resistance, the anti-establishment, when you're like, it is wrong to tell people they have they should have uh, their body, their choice. OK, I'll, I'll tell you my position. Uh, I am pro-choice and I oppose vaccine mandates for like basically the same reason. I am not pro-choice in the sense of the left where they're like abortions for any reason up to any point. I'm like, if the baby is viable, meaning it can survive on its own, don't kill it. That makes no sense. And there are very, very, very difficult challenges uh, and questions when it comes to abortion in earlier stages. But I do lean towards the the government should not mandate medical procedures uh, or mandate what a person can or can't can or cannot do in these regards when it comes to uh, abortion. There are big questions in that that uh, I don't have all the answers to because I am not the smartest person in the world. That means typically I oppose sex changes for children. But uh, there are questions about when parents have a right to decide what is right for their families and not. It's tough. Should the government intervene and stop certain things and others? Well, the reality is we have moral perspectives. It's not so much about whether parents have absolute rights. It's about what we think we know to be good and better for people. In that regard, I say, in my view, a woman has a right to choose. And there are uh, even exceptions later on in the pregnancy. And uh, but I don't agree with the left on their like limitless abortion thing. And when it comes to sex changes for children, I am opposed to these things. And it's mostly based on the scientific research and data that we've seen coming out of Europe and a lack of long term data as it pertains to the United States. And the fact that many of these kids, they really don't know what they'd be going through if they did. That being said, all that aside, when it comes to people like Hassan, I have to wonder why he often takes the capitalist corporate establishment position. I just. It is strange to me that I am more left wing than Hassan Piker, while he claims to be on the left and that I am on the right or I'm conservative. I will say this with utmost confidence. My economic policy views are to the left of Hassan Piker. And what I mean to say is, while he may espouse some of these positions, I really do not believe he actually holds them. Actions speak louder than words. You can say, I hereby think that we should redistribute wealth. However, massive multinational corporations should be given no bid, no liability contracts from the government. Everyone should be forced to participate. And I'm like, "Mm." (laughs) I don't know about all that, dude. That seems like fairly authoritarian. uh, 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 It's not an authoritarian left position. You're supporting the massive. uh, Well, I guess technically you could call it left, but it's more fascistic than anything. But this is the point ultimately, about the culture war. Hassan's a prominent streamer, the most prominent left wing streamer, and his positions are predictable and generic. He will absolutely just come out on the side of the corporation every single time. Not always. Okay, that's not fair. I'm speaking. I'm being hyperbolic. But he typically comes out in defense of the massive multinational corporation. I find that interesting. I typically oppose massive multinational corporations, the homogenization of power, the coalescing of power around centralized authorities. I think the government and corporations are both very, very bad and should not have that much power and it should be decentralized. I think war is bad. I think we should be responsible for ourselves. We should intervene a whole lot less. The U.S. shouldn't be involved in Ukraine. But oh, there we go. Hassan Piker, prominent voice of the left, is in favor of the war in Ukraine, has mocked me for it, supports the massive publicly traded multinational corporation in this regard. Just answer me how that makes sense. You don't have to agree with me. You can agree with us on that's absolutely fine. I just think the culture war, a large component of it is the marching in lockstep with the machine and those outside the machine. Yeah, but I'll leave it there. I'll end by saying it's victory. It's major victory. Shout out to Nick Merckx, Tim the Tatman, Dr. Disrespect. You are making the world a better place because you're just standing up for yourselves and each other. It's not about harsh ideology. It's about saying, hey, look, man, I believe this. So be it. Take, you know, the fact that Tim the Tatman said, remove my 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 operator bundle from this game at a detriment to himself. But because of it's what he believes in and his loyalty and his and his loyalty, that that is that is what makes a man a good person. We don't got to be sexist here. Strong character. That's that's what we need to show kids. That's inspiration. Standing up for those you care about and what you believe in. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.